Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome again to Amazing Adventure, A Journey for Life with Jesus. I'd like to welcome all of those of you here in Michigan and also our friends who are joining us across the country and around the world, part of our amazing discovery adventure into Bible truth. Well, we have a very important lesson. I think you're going to enjoy it tonight. It's very practical, and we have a lot of activities, and I know you'll like that, but we want to remind our friends who are joining us about the amazing facts Amazing Adventure Study Guides. And if you'd like to learn more about them, just go to the Amazing Facts website. It's amazingfacts.org, and you'll be able to learn a lot more about the resources available as part of this Amazing Adventure series. Well, before we get to our song this evening, we need to invite Pastor Doug to come forward on stage. So, Pastor Doug, come on out. All hands on deck. <laughs> Good evening, boys and girls and friends who are watching. Welcome to An Amazing Adventure. We have a, an amazing program tonight, too. We do, an important one. So let's stand, kids. We're going to sing our theme song. We'd like to invite the song leaders to come forward. Life is an adventure following the King. I think we all know the words and the tune by now, so let's sing it. Life is an adventure. Thank you very you. much. You may be seated. It's our time for our scripture reading and also our prayer. So I'd like to invite Andean to come forward. He is nine years old. Come on up. As well as Isabella. She is 10. And she's going to be having our prayer here in just a minute. But we're going to begin with our scripture reading, which is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31. Therefore... Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it with all the glory of God. Okay, thank you. And let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and that we can all be here at Amazing Adventure. Please help Pastor Doug and his words to be your words, not his. Um, and please help us to pay attention and learn more about you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Good job. All right. Well, we have some Bible questions that come in every night from kids around the country. And I'm always excited to hear what kind of questions are coming up. We got four great video questions that have come in. And so we're ready to take a look at our first question this evening. My name is Mateo. I am from Michigan. My Bible question is, how can I be saved? All right, very important question. Did you all catch it? His question is, how can I be saved? And of course, that's the purpose of these meetings, Pastor Doug, to talk about Amen. how a person can be saved. You know, the Bible tells us, first of all, we have a problem. The problem is sin. Jesus has the answer. It's his salvation. The penalty for sin is death. But Jesus said, I don't want you to die because I love you so much. I will die in your place for your sins. I will take the punishment for your sins. If you believe and accept it, then I will forgive you. And if you then confess your sins, tell the Lord you're sorry, repent of your sins, He gives you the Holy Spirit to live a new life, to walk in a new uh, life. So you ask, you believe, you receive the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says you become a new creature. It's like a new birth. And you start to follow Jesus. 
And that's the real amazing adventure. And we have uh, one of our lessons that specifically talks about this uh, science of salvation. Okay, and we're ready for our next question. Hi, my name is Vashti, and I live in Ypsilanti, North Dakota. My question is, did unicorns ever exist? Oh, good question. Do, does the Bible say anything about unicorns existing? I think in some translations it actually talks about, I think the word unicorn does appear, maybe the King James Version, and many uh, scholars have wondered, well, what was that talking about? Um, in the word una means one, like a unicycle. Mrs. Bachelor rides a unicycle. It's got one wheel. Uh, a unicorn is talking about one horn or a single horn. They wondered if it was referring to not a horse-like creature riding on rainbows with wings, but talking about the rhinoceros. And so if that word unicorn there in the Bible was uh, talking about a creature, it's probably not talking about that mythical horse that you see, but it's probably talking about that large African rhinoceros. And you know, long ago they not only had rhinoceros in What's the plural? You're from Africa. Rhinoceros. What's more than one rhinoceros? Rhinoceroses? Is? <laughs> Rhinos. <laughs> Rhinos. There you go. But not only did they have them in Africa, but they have, they found a lot of skeletons of what they called woolly rhinos and other rhinos that were even through Europe. So ancient Bible writers like Job, they were acquainted with some of these powerful creatures that had one horn. Now some of the rhinos have two horns and then there's another kind that actually just has one. That's so right. Yeah, and then there's the Indian rhino too. That's right. Yeah. The different kinds. All right. Ready for our next question. Hi. My name is Jude. I'm 11 years old and I'm from Missouri. And my question is, how do you talk to God in a way that he can answer back? Okay. The question is, how do we talk to God? Talking about prayer. And how do we know if God is answering us back? Well, God knows everything, right? Jesus said, your heavenly Father knows what things you have need of before you even ask Him. So we're not asking so that God can be informed. You don't have to pray louder for God to hear you, do you? He can hear when you whisper a prayer. So whenever you pray, God hears you. But if you want answers to your prayer, there's some uh, guidelines. First of all, you talk to God reverently. We pray to God in Jesus' name. We're not asking God to answer our prayers because we earned it or we've deserved it, but we're asking for His mercy because of His love for His Son and Jesus' sacrifice and love for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus said, whatever things you ask in my name believing, you will receive. And uh, then pray according to God's will. You don't want to be saying, you know, Lord, I want to have a million dollars. Well, you may not be able to handle a million dollars. So you pray for things. The Bible says, ask for the Holy Spirit. If you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those that ask? Ask for the good things that will help you to have true happiness, which is walking with God. But God hears every prayer. It's good. Spend time on your own. Talk to God reverently. Do you spend time in the morning? You should kneel. You might kneel on your bed or by your bed. I knew a little girl. I should say I knew about a little girl that she was afraid she'd forget to pray before school. So when she went to sleep at night, she'd throw her shoes under her bed. And when she got on her knees to find her shoes, she'd remember to pray. So you want to always remember to talk to God, give Him your life and your heart every day. And He will answer your prayers. You will see answers to prayer. Amen. Absolutely. All right. We have our final question for today. Hello. My name is Donica. I'm 10 years old. I'm from California. And my Bible question is, how shall we outreach and tell other people about Jesus? Okay, well that is a question that comes from one of our church members over That's there right. in California. And she's asking, how do we outreach or share our faith with others? Yeah, very good. And we want to send special greetings to the kids from our church there in Granite Bay, California that are watching as well. I heard, heard about uh, one family, a bunch, all three kids were watching the program last night. How can we share our faith with Jesus? Well, the first thing is when you're committed to Jesus, you'll be letting your light shine by your example. The Bible also tells us that we should study His Word so we know how to give answers. Now, you don't have to know everything to share your faith. Uh, if you know you're lost and you were found by God's grace, you share what Jesus has done for you, that He's given you peace in your heart. And so... Uh, you can be a witness. You can get literature, give Christian tracts out. 
Uh, give, and you can learn how to give Bible studies, give out Christian books. You can give out amazing facts, study guides, like the ones that go with this series. Say, oh, this is great, or DVDs and things like that. And so there's a lot of things you can do. Talk to people when you get a chance, and don't be afraid to say you believe in God. Everybody in the world today is being intimidated by the devil to hide their light under a bush. Don't be afraid to let your light shine and speak up for Jesus. You know what Jesus said? If you're not ashamed of me in this evil and adulterous generation, I will confess your name before my Father and the angels in heaven. And the book of Job tells us that God was confessing the name of Job in heaven because Job was so faithful on earth. So wouldn't you like God to brag about you in heaven? Be faithful here. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Even in the world where people tease you for being a Christian. Some of you go to public school. They might tease you sometimes. Okay, well, that's it for our Bible questions for today. And we'll have some more for tomorrow. And I think a few of the questions tomorrow are actually going to be from some in our group right here. All in right. So watch for that. Answer your Bible questions. Well, thank you very much, kids. We've got a very important lesson. I think we're going to have some fun tonight learning something. Now, this lesson can change your life. Uh, so you actually do live longer. We're going to be talking about God's super foods tonight. And I wish, oh, how I wish, when I was your age, that I knew what I know now. But I grew up and I didn't understand what the Bible says about God's superfoods. And I had all kinds of health problems because of it. But I feel better now at 60-something years old than I did as a kid before I knew these things. Remember our scripture reading, therefore whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Now, if it's possible for you to eat to the glory of God and to drink to the glory of God, that means it's possible for you to not eat and drink to the glory of God. Now, the best thing to do is to eat the diet that God designed for you. You know, I think I hear that somebody is in the captain's cabin We've got a special guest that's come again tonight from the Repto Company, and let's see who's coming. Oh, Kurt's got a friend. All right. Now, I was introduced a little earlier to Kurt's friend. Do we have a couple of young people who want to get an up-close person? If you have not been up here before, raise your hands. If you have not been up here before, you just about jumped out of your seat. You can come up. That's okay. And uh, well, you can come up, and uh, you can come up, and you can come up. Okay. I just had to run up the aisle. And this is, what's his name? His name is Demolition Dan. Demolition Dan. And I understand that he's got uh, great powers of escape. Yes. He could actually break through like walls in your house, like sheetrock and you know, stuff like that, walls, stone walls. <laughs> and the Lord made Dan where he's got just built-in armor. And even here on his hand, on the front, he's got like burrowing thorn. And this also protects him, I suppose, when animals bother him. Yes. And you guys, kids, want to feel him? Nah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> His shell is hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what kind of tortoise is he? He is a sulcutta tortoise. A, a sulcutta? Yes, that is uh, actually the third largest species of tortoise in the world behind the Galapagos. And they come from what island? Oh, they come from Africa. The continent right? of Africa. Yes. Okay. Yep. And how long do they live? 80 years. Or estimate 80 years. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And uh, is he a carnivore? No, he actually uh, eats lots of grasses and vegetables. He's a vegetarian. He lives a long time, doesn't he? Yep. And he, God made him where he knows how to hide himself. Can you get him to... Sure. T look how far in he can tuck. Try to get him. There we go. Just about this. So animals want to... They can kick them around like a football, but they can't hardly get in, and it hurts them. You want to feel them, kids? Yeah, you guys can Go ahead. Matter of fact... After you touch him, I'm going to let you guys sit down. I'm going to invite Kurt. He's going to take him up the aisle. And those of you on the edges, if you want to just get a closer look at Demo Dan, you can do that now. Let's give him a hand, okay? Thank him for doing that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, you go up to, you can take, take Demo Dan. Now, why he's doing that, I'm going to show you another tortoise. See the tortoise here? Mrs. Bachelor and I took a picture of this tortoise. It was at the Australia Zoo. Guess how old this tortoise was? 174 when we took the picture. And he lived, she lived to 176. This tortoise was part of three tortoises 
that Charles Darwin, in like 1835, he picked up in the Galapagos Islands. It's a Galapagos tortoise. They're as big as dinner plates. He named them Tom, Dick, and Harry. Took them to England. They were only about five years old then. And they didn't do very well in the cold, wet climate of England because they were used to the warm islands. So he then sent them back to Australia where they were in the botanical gardens. And they lived and outlived a lot of people and keepers one by one. Tom and, and Dick died. And then Harry, they thought Harry was Harry. And they kept trying to get Harry to get married and have babies. And years later they found out Harry was Harriet. <laughs> and she is a vegetarian. And we took these pictures when we visited the zoo. And uh, thank you so much. Let's thank Kirk for bringing in uh, Demolition Dan. And he, all right, he's, he's going to go up there on, you know what they call that, kids, in a ship, the back part of the ship with the deck? It's called the poop deck. That's what they call it, yeah. He's going to go in there in the captain's cabin and disappear. We're so thankful that he's gone and uh, he's shown us that, that special turtle. I, I meant we're so thankful that he came. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> so Harriet lived to 176 years of age. Now, Harriet was a vegetarian. See, I got pictures of her there eating her salad. This is the best and the original diet for man. That's going to take us right into our questions. Number one, does God care about our bodies and our health? Or did Jesus only came to save our souls? Does he care about our health and our bodies? The Bible says, through, uh, third letter of John, it says in uh, chapter 1, verse 2, I pray that you might prosper in all things just as your soul prospers. He says, I pray that you'll prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. And then Jesus, Matthew 4, 23, Jesus' ministry, he went around all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He went teaching and preaching in the church and the country, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Have you ever been sick? <clears throat> you ever been really sick? And it's no fun to be sick, is it? Sometimes you pretend you're sick because you didn't do your homework and there's a test at school, but sometimes you've really been sick. I remember I went to summer camp the day I got on the bus, I was so excited about summer camp. I even brought my guinea pig with me. The day I got on the bus, when I got off the bus, I had a couple little bumps. And one of the teachers said, what's that? I said, I don't know. It itches. They said, you got chicken pox. They put me in the camp infirmary, and I had to stay in there, just me and my guinea pig. For the first week of camp, I was so depressed. Everyone's laughing and screaming outside the window, and I was sick. You know, Jesus knows it's no fun to be sick. And he came to heal our sickness. And the Bible says, John 10, 10, Christ said, I have come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. He wants us to have a full, exciting life. God gave us bodies and he wants us to use them. So I need a volunteer. I'm going to go around the back side here. I sometimes... Now, raise your... If you've not been up here before, okay? So... Let me see. You're blowing your nose. You got a cold? Or you can come up. Yeah. Yep. You. <laughs> All right. Why don't you take a look in the mystery chest for us, okay? I want you to look in the chest and see if you can find a body. Absolutely. You see a body in there? You did. It's a little body. You can bring that over here. All right. Now... God gave us all a body. We were made in the image of God. Now that body, it's actually got movable arms and legs. Artists use this to draw. To see. Don't be afraid. I mean, you can move them around a little bit. See, pick up the legs. You can make them look like he's running. I don't think you can turn the head. But um, you got foot, you got a hand, you got legs, you got arms, you got elbows, you got toes. Now, if you lose your arm, can you still be saved? If you lose an arm and a leg, can you be saved? If you lose an arm, a leg, and a hand on the other arm, can you still be saved? If you lose your head, can you be saved? Who said yes? <laughs> no, you can't think without your head. 
This is the most important part of your body. What's your name? Joshua. Joshua. That's a good name. You know how to say that in Greek? Jesus. That's right. Yahshua is the Hebrew way of, seeing, of saying Jesus. It's just Jesus' name. It's a good name. It means God is Savior. This, of all the parts of your body, these parts of the body are taking commands from this part of the body. So hold that with one hand. Just hold it with one hand, like with the other hand. Take your left hand. That's his hand. Close your eyes. Hold out one finger. Don't open your eyes. Just hold out one finger. There you see. Look at that. That told that what to do. You can open your eyes now. <laughs> Lift up one foot. Lift up the other foot. Now lift them both up at the same time. That's been, there you go. See, the, the brain told him what to do. The most important part of your body is what you've got behind your eyes and between your ears. It's what's giving commands to all the rest of the body. Let's give Joshua a hand. You can keep, you can keep the body that was in the trunk. <laughs> Just don't, don't play with it. Your brain is a, when you grow up, it's about a two and a half pound electrochemical computer that is amazing. Do you know they still don't have a computer that will do what the human brain does? If they were to build a computer that did what the human brain does, it would need to be as big as the Empire State Building to hold it. You would need the power of Niagara Falls to power it, and you'd need the water of Niagara Falls to cool it because it would put out so much steam. When I'm talking, you know what's happening right now? You're hearing, you're translating the sounds that are going through the air. You're looking, you're reading my body language because as I'm talking, I'm giving you physical expressions and, and you're reading all that, you're calculating all that, you're putting it in, you're making abstract thoughts out of that and you're getting understanding. That's a miracle. And while you're doing that, your brain is still telling your lungs to breathe, your heart to beat, and you can feel your friend next to you that was pulling the hair on your arm. See, you also, I knew you'd do that as soon as I said that. I, your brain is amazing. The most important part of your body is here, and the devil is attacking the brains of young people because he doesn't care so much about your arms and your legs and your feet as much as he cares about your brain. If you take care of your brain, everything else is going to be better. What you eat, you ever heard the expression, you are what you eat? What you eat determines a lot about how you feel. What kind of food plan did God have for people when he made Adam and Eve in creation? The Bible says, God told them in Genesis 1.29, See, I've given you every herb that yields seed. Those were the nuts, obviously. And every tree whose fruit yields seed. You got fruits and you have nuts and you have grains. The original diet for man was fruits, nuts, and grains. Then after sin, because God said man could no longer eat from the tree of life, what happened? He added something else to the diet. It says in Genesis 3.18, and you will eat the herb of the field. Who knows what another word for that is? Vegetables. And you think that's a curse, don't you? Now, do you guys know what the difference is between a fruit and a vegetable? All right. I want two boys and two girls. Now, come around here first. I'll get a boy and a girl on this side. I'm trying to be fair. All right, you're all saying vote for me. Right, you can come on up. And uh, that's a boy and I want a girl here. Okay, you can come up and I'll go over here. No, I'm gonna go to the other side now. I gotta be fair. Tell you what, what's your name? Daniel? Good name. You can go up in the captain's cabin, find a bag. There's a heavy bag and bring that out with you. We'll come to this side now. Have you been up yet? No. All right, you can come up. And I need, I got a boy and a girl. I need a boy, another boy. You can come, okay. All right, don't worry, there's more happening, guys. All right, did you find that? <laughs> I told you, it's a heavy bag. All right, we're going to have a little contest here. This is going to be the battle of the genders continued. All right, the boys over here, girls over here. We're going to have a little test. You know what the difference is between a fruit and a vegetable? All right. I'll pull something out of the bag. You tell me what it is. Vegetable. I'll say vegetables. You want to hold that for me? Fruit. Vegetable. 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 Now you realize everything I hand you, you have to eat before the program's over. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 
You want to take a big bite of that? What is this, a fruit or vegetable? vegetable. Your hands are going to smell. I'm not going to do that to you. Sure enough, what is that? You guys are really smart. Most kids say this is a bit. You know what the favorite fruit is of an elephant? Squash, because when they sit on them, that's what happens. No, that's just not true. Fruit. Have you ever bit right into a lemon? Did you start to pucker when I did that? No, it usually works. All right, what, what's this? That's a carrot. I know it's a carrot. <laughs> Is it a fruit or vegetable? Vegetable. This is a potato that looks a lot like an apple, does it? No, it is an apple. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, some people, let's see how you do with this one here. Oh, man, I'm going to make ketchup in the process. It, it's a fruit. It's a fruit. What's that? Oh, you know, this is no fun at all. You guys know all the answers. All right. You know what the key is? It, were there bananas in the Garden of Eden? No. Let me tell you why. A banana, you've never seen a banana seed. The little black things in a banana... They're not seeds. They're what they call vestigial remnants. A banana is actually a hybrid of two inedible Asian fruits. And so they had different kinds of fruits in the Garden of Eden, but you don't get a banana until you cross those two Asian fruits and they plant the suckers from bananas to make other bananas. Banana is very unusual. So I can't wait to get to heaven and show Adam and Eve a banana because they didn't have one. Well, you guys seem to know your fruits and vegetables. Okay, you can put that back. And we'll be distributing your fruits and veggies. We're going to blend this and make a glass of V8 for everybody when we're done. Thank, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can sit down. Let's give them a hand. Thank you very much. The original diet for man was a vegetarian diet. And they've proven now you'll live a lot longer and feel a lot better if you stick to the original diet. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 6.24, the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes for our good always that He might preserve us alive. The reason God designs what the best food is for us is to help us feel better and live longer. When the children of Israel went through the wilderness and they ate the food that God gave them for 40 years, you know what the Bible says in Psalms 105, after they came out of Egypt, and there was not one feeble person among His tribes. Can you imagine two million people, not one sick, because they had been following God's health laws, drinking the water that God gave them, eating the bread that God gave them. You might say they were eating angels' food. Now, in Daniel chapter 1 is a very important story about young people using self-control in what they eat. The people of Israel were conquered by the Babylonians. The Babylonians decided to take the very brightest and best of the royal seed, and they would pick some of them out and they would train them in the Babylonian culture and languages to be representatives in the palace for the king. And they were allowed to go to the king's palace and go to the king's university and eat from the king's cafeteria. Most of the other slaves were not treated so well. But these three, actually four young men, you know what their names were? Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. Their Babylonian names Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now when they, the chief of the young men, he's called the chief of the eunuchs, he came and he told the young men, all right, here's what you're going to do. Here's your study schedule and here's your diet schedule and you'll be eating from the cafeteria. Daniel and his friends said, uh, we're going to have a problem with that because the king's drink is alcoholic and we don't do that. And his food, it's, the Bible says, is unclean. 
And it says, Daniel and his friends purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. That means you can defile, means to make something dirty. He would not defile his body with the king's food, even though everyone in Babylon thought it was good, or with the portion of the king's meat or the wine which he drank. They said, we're not going to eat that. Now, they didn't want to insult the king. They were very thankful that they were able to stay in the palace. But he knew that God had said, you're not to eat these things and you're not to drink these things. Some people say, well, when you're in Rome, you do what the Romans do. Or when you're in Babylon, you do what the Babylonians do. But they said, no, my body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're not going to defile our bodies. That's 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Don't you know that you are the temple of God? and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Notice this. If anyone defiles the temple of God, him will God, what? Destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You are an amazing, miraculous creation of God, and he wants you to care for your body, take care of your body, not only because you'll feel better, but so you can glorify him in your body that belongs to him. So what did Daniel and his friends do? They told Ashpenaz, the chief of the eunuchs, they said, look, we'll make a deal with you. Give us 10 days. Prove your servants. Test us for 10 days. Let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. And then you check us out. And after 10 days, you see if we don't look healthier than all of the other young people that are eating from the king's cafeteria where they have the unclean animals and the alcoholic wine and food that had been sacrificed to idols. He said, um, let's prove it. So he said, well, that doesn't sound dangerous. And he saw they were good young men. They were very polite in their request. Notice what the Bible says. At the end of the 10 days, their features appeared better and fairer and fatter in flesh than all of the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them, Daniel and his three friends, were ten times better than all of the astrologers and the magicians, all the wise men in all of his kingdom. These young men, by eating right, they felt so much better. Now, when I grew up, I didn't know much about eating. You know, I, my... <laughs> We, we ate all kinds of pagan things, and I never felt very good, and I didn't do good in school. I think half of it is because I wasn't eating very good. I didn't know. My mother would work late, and my brother and I would get ourselves breakfast, and I would eat a hostess Twinkie, a Fig Newton, a cup of tea or coffee, and go to school, and I'd be... And I couldn't pay attention, and my grades were bad. I went to 14 different schools because I got into so much trouble, and I had bad grades. After I learned what the Bible says about health, I went back to college, and I had a 4.0 average, which is about the highest score you can get, because I was eating better and taking care of myself, and I had a much better success then. So, why did Daniel and his friends refuse to drink the king's wine? Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. The Bible says no drunkards will enter the kingdom of God. Alcohol is bad news. All right, I need to bring somebody up front here. Uh, you, have you not been up yet? You've been up? No. All right, come on up here real quick. This isn't going to take, oh, it's, it's not going to take long. I'm just going to give her most of a dollar. I have a dollar here. Let me see what I've got going on. Oh, man, I don't have a dollar, but I've got five. So I'll tell you what we'll do here. Would you like that? Okay. There you go. Listen how aghast they were. Now stay here. I'll tell you why. 45% of all of the people who go to the hospital tomorrow will go because of alcohol in the emergency rooms. Over 50% of all the people who go to prison will go because they are committing crimes from drinking alcohol. Over half of the calls the police get for domestic violence 
Ms. Batchel and I were watching the news today and we saw that a police officer in Sacramento where we live was shot going to a home because of domestic violence. Over 50% of the time somebody is drinking alcohol. Over 50% of the birth defects are from alcohol. How much should a Christian support that? Not at all. Most of the misery that comes into our society is from drinking. Now you know with a piece of tape that's legal. I'm going to give you both pieces. Hey, that was a good visit, huh? She, all she has to do is tape it back together. The bank will take it. Amen? Let's give her a hand. All right. Now when John the Baptist, listen, you know the story of John the Baptist? When the angel came to Zechariah and said, you're going to have a son. He's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's going to introduce Jesus. But he said, he will drink neither wine or strong drink, but he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Notice the difference. Which, <laughs> which spirit do you want to be full of? Have any of you ever noticed you drive by a liquor store and there'll be a sign that says, wine, beer, spirits. Have you ever seen that? Wine, beer, and spirits. Why are we going to drink? They're not good spirits. You got to pick what kind of spirit you want. You want the Holy Spirit? Or the spirit that comes on people when they're drunk is really a disgusting spirit. Christians should not drink any alcohol. Oh, but didn't Jesus turn the water into wine? He turned water into pure grape juice because it represented His blood. And at the Last Supper, Jesus said, I'm going to give you this grape juice. He uses the word wine because that's the only word for grape juice in the Bible. I'm going to give it to you and I will not drink it again until I drink it with you new, new wine, like grape juice, in my Father's kingdom. Christians should not drink any alcohol. It causes so much suffering. Strongest man in the world, who was he? What did the angel say to Samson's mother? What was the name of Samson's mother? Who knows? It doesn't say. That's just a trick question. She's called Manoah's wife. But the angel appears to her and he says, Therefore be careful and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean and you're going to have a son that is going to end up being the strongest physical human that ever lived. And you know when Samson got in trouble? He was at Delilah's house and he started to drink again. Started to hang around with the vineyards and he lost his hair and he lost his strength until he repented. Christians should not drink. What was it um, about the king's meat that Daniel knew would defile him? Now Daniel was said he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. What was it? Are there some meats that are unclean? The best diet for humans is a vegetarian diet. Uh, you may have heard a few years ago the um, National Geographic did a study to find out where in the world are the people who live the longest. There are three places in the world, a study called the Blue Zones. Who are the people that live the longest? You've got the people in Okinawa, Japan. They live a long time. I, I've been there. You've got the people that live in Sardinia. They eat a very simple Mediterranean diet. And the other group was Seventh-day Adventists in Southern California. A concentration of Seventh-day Adventists in Loma Linda had the longest lifespan and it was connected with not only their keeping the Sabbath but their vegetarian healthy eating habits. You will live a longer, stronger life. But God said, look, if you're going to eat meat, do it very sparingly and it needed to be the clean meat. God allowed some things not because He wanted it but because of the hardness of our hearts He made certain laws. He said, when they entered the ark, Noah took the animals how? Two by two, if they were unclean. Now people sing the song, and the animals went on two by two, two by two, two by two, and they forget about the sevens. The Bible says you'll take with you seven of each clean animal, the male and his female, that's Genesis 7 verse 2, take two of the animals that are unclean, the male and his female. Now right after the flood, or before the flood, how long were people living? Noah, 950 years. Adam, 930 years. Methuselah, who knows? 969 years. But during the flood, all the vegetation was destroyed. Noah took the clean animals by sevens on the ark. And so as an emergency, whenever they did a sacrifice, they were allowed to eat of the clean animals. They didn't do it very often. But look at what happened to the lifespan of man. In this chart here, 
Those guys are the ones who lived 900 years. Each of those lines is 100 years. Right after the flood, look at how the lifespan went from 900 to 70. And from the days when King David wrote, our days are three score and ten. That means 70. A score is 20. And if by reason of strength we live, four score. That's 80. It's with pain and struggles. But look, they started eating meat as a regular part of the diet and their lifespans went boop. In heaven, are we going to eat animals? No. Are you going to be running around in heaven trying to catch a chicken and cut off its head? And <laughs> when Adam named the animals, did Adam look at the cow and say, Big Mac? <laughs> and then he looked at the chicken and he said, McNuggets and KFC. No, they were his friends. They didn't kill and eat the animals. That was something that came because of sin. Now God said, if you're going to eat animals, He said, here's the rule. I the hoof, the cloven hoof, and chewing the cud you may eat. And that would be goat. It had to have both characteristics. Not just the, a camel chews the cud, but it doesn't divide the hoof. It's unclean. And Jesus made fun of the scribes and the Pharisees because they were straining their water to get the bugs out, but then they were eating camel steak. He said, you're hypocrites. You're straining a gnat and swallowing a camel. You're not supposed to eat camel. They're unclean. And some animals have a cloven hoof, but they don't chew the cud. What's that? Pigs, swine, hogs. The swine, the pig is unclean for you because it does have a cloven hoof, but it does not chew the cud. You shall not eat their flesh. You shall not touch their bodies. The Bible says they are an abomination. And yet a lot of people eat puerco, bacon, pork, ham, chitlins. And they eat every part of the pig. They eat its snout to its tail, pickled pig's feet, its head. <laughs> now I used to eat all that. When I was living with my dad, I told you I ate like a pagan. We ate turtle steak. I've eaten rattlesnake. I've eaten frog's legs. I've eaten all the snails, escargot. Oh, I look back now. That's a long time ago. But I was sick all the time. You know, they took out my tonsils. There would have been nothing wrong with them. But they took out my tonsils because uh, I always had a sore throat. Well, the reason I always had a sore throat is because I was eating all kinds of candy and ice cream. And if I had just been eating right, I'd probably still have my tonsils today. And I'd be able to sing better. This man is taking his lunch home with him. How many of you know that uh, your parents ever say that to you? This little piggy, they take your toes when you're little. They go, this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. See, a pig won't even eat pork. The pig was eating roast beef. <laughs> Pigs, you know, when you're when you don't uh, take care of your room, your mother comes in, she looks at your room and she says, this looks like a deer meadow. No, she never says that. She says, it looks like a what? A pig pen. Because pigs are about the filthiest animals. Now, pigs are smart. So are dogs. But you're not supposed to eat dogs and you're not supposed to eat pigs. Now, certain animals God has are scavengers. You're not supposed to eat the scavengers. Sharks, scavengers. They're unclean. Skunks, Scavengers, they're unclean. I was driving down the road on my way here the other night. A deer got hit by a car, very sad, but uh, a vulture was there having lunch. Vultures, scavengers. Would you eat a vulture? Pigs, pigs eat garbage. Why would you eat a garbage can? You know, the Bible says, I'll read it to you, Isaiah 66, 17. For with fire and with my sword I will plead with all flesh, says the Lord, those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves who go to the gardens after an idol in its mists, eating swine. You know what a swine is? Swine's flesh, the abomination, and the mouse. People will eat a ham sandwich. Would you eat a mouse sandwich? Yeah. They do in some parts of the world. Yeah, they, there are people in places, they eat rats, they eat dogs, they eat all kinds of things. And the Bible says it's unclean. Now, you're never going to guess who this is. I don't know if you can see it in the picture there. That's me. When I was a little younger and I had a business, I would drive around. I had, an, I had a refrigerated cooler in the back of my car. You can't read the sign, but it says, Doug Bachelor's Wholesale Prime Beef Steaks. And I used to sell steak around uh, Southern California in the deserts there. 
and they were their prime steaks and I'd buy them from the, the meat uh, packers and I'd butcher them up myself and I'd sell them prime choice inspected. And one of my customers said, can you get me some USDA inspected pork? I said, well, I'll check. And I, I was young. I didn't know much. I went and talked to a friend. He laughed. He said, Doug, you can't get graded pork that way. He said, when they sell pork, they sell uh, papers that tell you to cook it well because you can get trichina worms. Uh, pigs, they got a lot of disease. And the Bible says you should never eat the blood of any animal or the fat. And a lot of disease in our country comes because of people eating so many animal products. And now they're giving the animals in the farms injections and antibiotics. And then that affects us as we eat it. And uh, I guess you can tell how I feel. But I'm telling you because I've learned the hard way. I've been on both sides. I am so much better off now physically because I follow God's practices. Now the animals, two rules for the animals. If you were going to eat an animal that needed cloven hoof and what else? Chew the cud. If you're going to eat a fish, what did it need? Fins and scales. These you can eat of all that are in the waters, whatever has fins and scales. It needed both. Tuna, it's got really little scales, but tuna had fins and scales. Catfish, unclean. They're scavengers. My brother and I were fishing when he was about your age off the back porch. My dad's house was right on the bay in Miami Beach. Brother caught a catfish, trying to take the hook out. The spine, the dorsal fin from the catfish poked my brother's finger. The infection was so bad and the toxins so bad he could never bend his finger again from the toxins in a catfish. And so nasty. The Bible says if it didn't have fins and scales, all these in the seas or rivers that does not have fins and scales that move in all of the waters, it says they are an abomination to you. Shrimp and crab and snails and clams and I heard a report on the news yesterday. They're having people in the Chesapeake Bay area. They're getting what they call a flesh-eating bacteria that kills people, makes them sick. They amputate their limbs because of the bacteria, and it comes from shellfish. They said that on the news yesterday. God knew what he was talking about. So that's the rule for the fish. What about birds? The rule for the bird is really a principle. The, ant, the birds that were unclean for food, it says every raven after its kind, the owl, the night hawk, the cacaw, the hawk after its kind, the vulture, the eagles, the raptors, carnivorous birds, ducks, don't eat. A foraging bird, chicken, turkey, quail, you could technically eat. Now in New York City, we used to have tens of thousands of pigeons. Technically they're clean, but I'd never eat a New York pigeon. I won't tell you why. Anyway, so these animals, they said, if you're going to eat an animal, it had to be a clean animal. But today, I'm not so sure it's safe to eat any animals. What does the Bible say about, uh, what does God say about uh, our food? The Lord commanded us to observe these statutes and to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive. Now, we talked about the clear black and white idea of what you should eat, what's clean, what's unclean. But what about eating temperately, using some wisdom? All right, I need, uh, need my table up here for our crew. And uh, I need, let me think, I need four kids, I guess. So, who, if, you don't, if you've raised your hand before, you're, you're voting, you want to come up? You can come up, okay. Can, all right, let me see here. You're going to come up, all right, you haven't been up yet? All right, so you said nicely. Come on up. All right, three, and I'll get one from over here. This group's being quieter than that group. So, all right, let me see. You, you right here on the inside. Yep, sorry. Yep, there we go. Did I pick? Oh, I got one girl. For, all right, come on. Let's see here what we got going on. Um, all right, stand behind the table here, boys. We're going to do a little experiment, boys and girl. I'm sure you guys have never seen this stuff before. Okay, I don't even want to advertise. I love spread. I love spread. Now don't say it yet. You, you, you might be sorry you did. Let's see here.
All right. Let's see here. I just want you to see this. So, do you have any idea how much sugar is in this stuff that people are eating? Well, let's find out here. What's your name? Philip. You got the spoon? How many teaspoons of sugar do you think are in this candy? You've never eaten one of these, have you? You have? I appreciate your honesty. I have too. But it's been a long time. Okay. All right. Uh, I want you to put a teaspoon in here. Let's count how many he puts in. Let's start with one. That's a, put a full teaspoon in. Here you, all right. Just try not to spill too much. There we go. One. How many? Let's count together. Two. Keep going. Three. Four. Five. Six. Now put uh, half of a teaspoon in. That's good. All right, so six and six and three quarters, roughly. And that's how much sugar is in one candy bar. That's not counting the oil that's in there. Okay, we're not done. Now wait. Let's say. Let's suppose you had that for lunch and you wanted to wash it down with a uh, with a sprite. So I tell you what. Uh, start putting teaspoons in here. So how many we got in here so far? Six and six, three, six and three quarters. All right, put in another one. Let's we'll say full teaspoons now. Come on, don't mess around. Seven, eight. Three, well, let me do three. Keep going. Keep going. Four. Five. I'm counting out the soda. Six. Keep going. Seven. Keep going. Eight. Nine. Ten. How do, when do you think we're going to stop? Keep going. Eleven. Twelve. All right, hang on a second. We're not done. Keep going. Thirteen. Fourteen. 15, you've not done a cooking show yet, have you? 16, one more, all right, that's good. All right, well, yeah, but half of it's on the table. Now, if you were sitting down for breakfast and you've got some cereal, you guys, you don't like eat sugar frosted flakes, do you, or Cocoa Puffs? No. I eat Cocoa Puffs. Cocoa, 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 Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, I eat Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> if, you, if you sat down with your Cocoa Puffs and you said, okay, Mom, I'm going to put a little more sugar on my cereal, and you went, one... Two, three. Would she stop you? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> yeah. If my dad was there, you, my mom would. But my dad would. Your mom would. Your dad would. Okay. If you have a candy bar and a Seven Up, this is how much sugar you have. But now, the Coke has got. Add yeah. another. Add another one for the Coke. Add one more for the Coke. Four. One more. Yeah. All right. So the Coke has got uh, 16, and add two more now for the Pepsi. That's, yeah. So if you have a Snickers candy bar and a Pepsi, this is how much sugar you're putting in your body. Do you realize sugar is a chemical? This has a chemical reaction on your body. And people are getting diabetes in epidemic proportions for that. Now, the Reese's, if you were to eat the Snickers and the Reese's, we'd have to call 911. Because this has got 6.75 teaspoons of sugar. That's got 9.5 teaspoons of sugar in it. And kids go to school and they wonder why they can't pay attention. The parents are getting a medication and they're going to the doctor and they're getting colds and they got a sore throat and their nose is running. And you're going, what's the problem? One candy bar is this completely... Let me show you. All right, let me show you something here. I put on the screen. One 12 ounce can of soda, 39 grams of sugar. That's nine and a third teaspoons. And look how much sugar. See the screen up here? Look at how much sugar kids ate in 1820. The average American in a year ate six pounds of sugar. That's all year. Now, the average American eats 150 pounds of sugar. That's three pounds, one person a week. And some of you are eating mine because I'm not eating that much. So some people are eating 200 pounds of sugar a year. Four pounds a week. You guys think I'm going to let you take that back to your seats? You better think again. No, I'm not giving that away, am I? I'm telling you guys, nope, nope, you don't get the candy bar. Especially you, you're already wired. Okay, thank you. Let's give them a hand.
<laughs> I love you. Thank you very much. You know, I love you too much to give you that stuff. Now, I know some of you have it, but I want you to think about what the dangers are in, well, oh, will they make it? All right, good job. So, the Bible says, eat that which is good. Now, some people say, well, Pastor Doug, aren't we supposed to eat meat? Because we've got these canine teeth, which means we're carnivores. You know, we're supposed to rip and tear meat. That's nonsense. You know this guy? Does he have canine teeth? He's a vegetarian. One of the most powerful animals. Giraffe, tallest animal, vegetarian. Elephant, biggest animal, vegetarian. The idea that, you, how big are an elephant's teeth? You got tusks. So the idea that we're designed to eat meat is not true. The human's digestive system is designed to be a vegetarian system. And it's already proven now some of the marathon runners and the best athletes are not only vegetarians, they're vegan vegetarians. I'm a vegan vegetarian now because I learned so much about it. What should guide me in choosing how I live and eat? Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. All right. Three of the kids that just came up before come back. But uh, the young man who, no, not you. You, you, got to take, you got to do demonstrate. The other kids who are just here come back. Yeah. The reason I'm bringing you back, I never had you do anything. Come up here. I want you to do something. Look in, look in the chest here and see if you can find some lights. Look in the treasure chest. Wave to the camera. Do you see something that will light up? The sticks? See the glow sticks? There you are. Come, yo, grab them. Come here. All right. You guys are going to help me. Now, you might need, what's your name? Katie, you might need help, but uh, can, you, can you break this? I need three more kids. All right, right here. Up here. Yeah, all right, up here. Yeah. Up here. Let me see here. All right, if you can come in. Your friend, your friend was advocating for you. So I got six kids up here. Okay. Let me see. You got, don't, all right, go ahead, break it. Yeah, break it. Yeah, break it. Break that. Can you break it? You guys tell me if you need help. Break it. You, we don't have enough vegetarians here. Let me see. You got it? Shake it. Oh, that's the wrong color. Here. No, no, no. I need red. I don't have real red. You want to, can you break it? I need red. I need yellow. Who's got, and I need green. Did you get your breakers yet? Oh, you got the green. Come on out front here. Just snap them. See if you guys are vegetarians. You, you probably are, huh? All right, here we go. Oh, I got it. I got the All right. Let's see. We got a green. Two greens. I want the two greens over here. You're green. Come over here. You're green. We got. Oh, we got three greens. Let me see here. I need a red. I need a yellow. Who's got the yellow? You got two yellows right here. Yellow. Two yellows in the middle. I can't get mine. You got. You're. You're. We'll have to work with pink here. Shake it. Okay. We're gonna pretend the pink is red. All right. Red's over here. Let's pretend they're red. Here we go. Turn around, face the group here. Yellow's here. How many of you understand the rules of driving? Greens, you can come over here. You understand rules of driving? All right. Red light, what does red light mean? Stop. Green light? Stop. Yellow light? Stop. Yellow light means go real fast. The light's getting ready to change. No, no, actually yellow means caution, right? All right, now I'm going to name different foods, and I want you to tell me, is it red, green, or yellow? So, strawberries. Red. Green. 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 Green, that's good. Green means go ahead, go ahead and eat, okay? Pork chops. Red. Red. Potato chips. Red. Yellow. Yellow, that's it, because they are yellow, right? Oh. Grapes. Green. Green. Ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow. Yeah. yellow. Yeah. Kind of yellow orange. <laughs> um, watermelon. Green. Broccoli. Green. Of course, broccoli is green. Brussels sprouts. Green. Red. Brussels sprouts are red. No, I'm kidding. I just don't like Brussels sprouts. So, Wine, alcohol? Red. Red. And so everything is either, there's some things are good, eat freely. 
Some things are caution. Some things are absolutely no. You don't eat them. Thank you very much. You can give them a hand. You can take those with you. Yes. This lady in the picture, and yeah, don't play with the lights here until the program's over. This lady in the picture was a member of our church. Her name was Viola Cook. She lived to 111 years of age. Actually, she's 111 in this picture year. Was a vegetarian her whole life. Does God's word have more secrets for a longer, stronger life? Let's go through some of these very quickly. First of all, eat regular meals. The Bible says feast at the proper time for strength, not for drunkenness. B, have self-control. Paul said, I discipline my body and I bring it into subjection. First Corinthians, you need to get exercise. Now, any of you boys here know how to do a push-up? Well, I guess girls might know how to do push-ups too. Who knows how to do push-ups? Let me see. I got to pick someone. You're going to come do one with me. You want to do a pick? All right, he picked. Your friend's helping you. I got two or three folks. Come on up here. All right. You know, can you do a push-up? Very good, very good. All right. Now, can you push up and clap your hands before you hit the bottom? Good. Wow, I'm impressed. Can you clap your hands twice? That's pretty hard, huh? Now, how old are you? Twelve. Twelve, okay. I got eight grandchildren, I think. How many do we have here? Thirty-eight. Eight. Nine. See, we forgot. All right. Think I can do a push-up? How about clapping my hands? Yeah. Twice? Yeah. That was two? All right. <laughs> Can't stand. Thank you very much. Good job. You, you need to get your exercise. And don't overeat. I hope that's a vegan burger. Something else that will make you live longer? A merry heart does good like a medicine. Be joyful. It actually releases endorphins. It keeps you healthy and fights disease. Helping others will help you live longer and be healthy. Share your bread with the hungry. And it says your health will spring forth speedily. And it says then trust in the Lord. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Notice what it does for you. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Trust and honor God. Live a holy life. Something else very important in good health? Six days thou shalt labor. It didn't, it not only do we keep the Sabbath, he says six days you shall labor. God wants us to be doing our work. And, and then, of course, not only do we work, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. But then we also are going to need to rest. There is a big problem in North America and a lot of places we travel. India, Mexico. Do you know what country in the world consumes the most sugar? North America. Germany's next. Mexico is number eight. Just pounds and pounds of sugar. And there's an epidemic of diabetes that is going to bankrupt the medical expenses of our country in a few years if something doesn't happen. Kids are just eating so much sweets and sugar and oil and stuff and chemicals. It's not just the, um, it's not just the sugar in the Pepsi and the Coke. You know, it's not just the caffeine that wires people out, but there's even phosphoric acid and things in there that you can use that to clean the battery terminals on a car. I mean, it's just, it's very powerful stuff and kids and everyone are consuming these things because the commercials make them think it's good. Another important point in living a long, healthy, strong life, water. Drink plenty of water. Now, you guys are all getting a gift tonight. I told you, everybody's going to get something. You're all going to get an amazing adventure water bottle here, okay, tonight for your backpack. So when you go out and you got your whistles, I know your parents love you're going around camp and whistling like her. They're going to really like us. So keep, drink plenty of water. Keep clean. Now listen, we're not done yet. We're almost done. Don't use anything that harms your body. Listen carefully. Shh. Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good. And not only do we eat good, you need fresh air. 
And why would you want to pollute the air that you're breathing? Pastor Doug used to smoke. And uh, I'm glad, you know, shh, shh, shh. I'm glad that, uh, I praise the Lord that he helped me quit smoking. But cigarettes are bad news. And it's one of the big killers. And now the kids, it's not just the smoking, it's the, the vaping. And uh, it'll, would you like to ha find out, uh, we're going to have a, a lung capacity contest. I need two volunteers. I'll come over here this time because I'm, I want to be fair now. All right, you can come up here. And uh, I think, well, let me see here. You can come up. All right, have you been up yet? Nope. Okay. All right. Look in the chest. See if you find some, find some red balloons in there. Pastor Ross, you want to help me? Now, Pastor Ross grew up in a good Christian home. He never smoked. I smoked, but I quit. And I tried to exercise. All right, let's, pull out, uh, let's pull out a balloon for everybody. So get ready to blow that up. Go ahead and put it in your mouth. Get ready to blow it up. Now, I've already tested that balloon with my mouth, so. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to take a deep breath. Take a few deep breaths. <gasps> okay? Because we're going to see who can blow up the balloon the biggest. This is, you know what you call a car with two pastors in the front seat? What? Dual airbags. So we're going to see if Pastor Ross and I have more wind, if we're bigger wind bags than you guys. So you take as deep a breath as you can and see how big you can make the balloon in one breath, okay? You can't, then, you can't sneak it through your nose and keep puffing it in there. Just one lung full, okay? All right, hang on. Ready? All right, judges? <laughs> huh? How many think this is bigger? How many, how many think? I guess it's a tie on windbags. All right. <laughs> you need to be able. All right, no, 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 sit down, sit down. We're almost done, kids. You want to, you, you can sit down. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Thank you very much. And we'll give you some balloons when you're done here. You want, don't ever smoke. Smoking is the number one disease that is avoidable. It causes so much disease or uh, sickness and problems that are easily avoidable. Be temperate in all things. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. And our bodies need rest. Now I'm going to have one more young person come up here. And well, maybe two. All right. You can come up. See if you can find something that's drivable in the chest there. And you haven't been up yet? I, I was pointing to him, but nice try. Come on up. All right, look in the chest. See if you find something you can drive in the chest here. And I'll close with this story, but I want you to all be good now. Shh, listen. So somebody comes. Keep looking. There you go. Somebody comes, and they say, Pastor Doug, can I borrow your truck? We've got to take a little mission trip, and we're going to use it for a week. And I say, okay. So just hold those for a second here. You can turn around so people can see it. Okay. And so I lend them my new car. So they take my car and they drive it and they don't check the oil and they don't check the air in the tires and they don't check the water in the radiator and they run it and run it and they don't stay on the road. They go off road. They go cross country, but it's not a four wheel drive. And they beat the smithereens out of my car and they run it into trees and other cars. Finally, after a week, they come back and the car. I can see it coming over the hill. It's making this terrible banging noise. Smoke is billowing out from the tailpipe. The tires are worn off and sparks are flying out from the rim because they're driving on the rims. There's not even any tires left. One headlight is hanging out like a dislocated eyeball. <laughs> the broken windshield. They get out of the car, they slam the door, it falls off. The hood pops up, steam is issuing out. And they say, thanks, Pastor Doug, for lending me your car. We had a great time. Can we borrow it again next month? Am I going to lend them my car? No. All right, listen now. Shh. You've got one life. You have one body. 
You've only got one chance with that one body. Jesus is offering you an eternal body when He comes. If you don't take care of the one He's given you, He's not very likely to give you a glorified eternal body if you deliberately wreck the one He's given you. You need to glorify God in your body. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, do all to the glory of God. Are you willing to do that, friends? Amen. Do you love Jesus? You want to eat and live so you can be a champion for Him? Eat the superfoods and you'll feel super. I believe it's true. We're going to pray and we're going to ask Him. Shall we close our eyes right now? Father in heaven, thank you so much for the truths you give us in your word, how we can live longer, stronger, abundant lives and glorify you, to have strength to serve you and serve our fellow men. Bless these young people where they can remember and practice the lessons we've learned tonight that it'll make a positive difference in their lives and to share it with their friends. We thank you. Be with the remainder of our programs. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And say thank you very much. And yes, they get to keep the cars. God bless you. Our next lesson tomorrow night going to be a fun lesson whistling through the graveyard. We hope we see you all.